Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here. Today we're finally going to finish setting up uh, the, uh, the equipment with the addition of the USB cables. So we're finally getting there. We're uh, at the end of the road and it's actually, I've, I've been shooting on the same day. Uh, you'll notice that it's later during the day. It's now cloudy and the reason for that is that uh, I kind of started having the symptoms of the beginning of a heat stroke. So I had to just like, okay, take a little break, go back inside, use the AC, drink a lot of water, relax, take it fine. And then I'm back to finish all of this. So whew, we're, we're slowly getting there. So now we're going to connect all of the USB uh, cables and try to make them look as beautiful as possible, which is not my forte or my four, whatever you pronounce that. Um, so we're going to start with small USB cables because small USB cables are easy and we're going to use that for the electronic filter wheel and for the electronic focuser because neither requires a lot of data and I've had a lot of success using those, those short USB t cables that I think are 50 millimeter long. Those are uh, provided by ZWO even though they're the flat cables I've never had a problem with them and they're great to connect to things that don't need a lot of bandwidth like a filter wheel or an electronic filter focuser since you barely need to send any data across so we're just I'm just going to connect that and we're going to put that here and we're going to do the same thing for the um, electronic focuser now before like I'm going to show you at the same time I'm going to tighten all of the cables but actually before you tighten all of the cables you'll want to have connected your equipment and achieved rough focus at infinity because uh, the focuser can uh, still move so this can still move up and down relative to the uh, telescope and so if I were to like tighten the, the cables too much there might not be enough room for the, uh, the the focuser to move up and down but I know that I'm roughly in focus right now at infinity so I will do everything in one go which means that now you know those cables dangling I don't want them to be dangling right because I want them to be as tight as possible so what we're going to do is I think I'm going to do something like that and at the same time I'm going to snag on that cable so that it's also uh, fairly tight as well and I'm going to use a zip tie so obviously normally I'd be using zip ties on all of those home intruders that come to steal my stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't really happen in Japan. Although a few weeks ago, someone stole my road bike from my garage, um, which was not pleasant. Uh, the, the cops found it, which is great, uh, but it was still not a, not a great experience because it's half broken now. So uh, with that said, let's uh, use that zip tie, not on criminals, but on uh, a poor camera and try to, uh, to get everything kind of uh, worked in. Can I actually do this properly? Now that's another question. Okay, and I've used the zip tie. Now we're, we're like much less wind sensitive, which is nice. And we can go to the following cable. So the next cable I'm gonna use is a big fat USB 3 cable that I'm gonna use for the main imaging camera. For the main imaging camera, I prefer not to use like the ZW cables in my case. Uh, because uh, many people have found that sometimes they have trouble with the ZW cables. And I want to connect that to the computer that is here, to the USB ports at the back of the computer. So maybe I'm actually going to unplug that for a moment. And we're going to start from the computer itself. So I'm going to plug that back on, the, uh, USB, on one of my USB 3 ports here. Here we are. And I want to make sure, like ideally, I'd, I'd just get like a smaller, shorter USB cable, but um, I have to do with this huge long cable and I want it to be tight enough so that I don't get like the wind snagging on it. So I'm gonna try and basically use this as a spool. <laughs> I like how uh, stupid my, my systems can get. Okay, and I think this is actually too short and I don't want to sacrifice too much. So I am going to do something else. Right now, uh, this thing has been going behind the guider. I'm going to go under the guide scope. So I gain a bit of length without going around the telescope like that. And now we can do our spooling. So I'm not sure. I think in the end, the spooling here, I will like tighten it up with another zip tie uh, and then we're gonna see 
uh, whether it's going to work well or not. So hopefully it's going to be fine. I've never really done that. Oh, this is great. This is a great uh, distance. It's not uh, the best. So I think what we can do to make it even better is, okay, yeah, you spool. Stop not spooling. Spooling is good for you, cable. Don't move. Don't move. You're good here. And while I am still putting tension on here, I'm going to go under the uh, zip tie or the Velcro tie that we had, that we installed last time for the power and go like that. Oh, this looks neat. This looks neat. Oh, I like this. Okay, so we're getting, we're getting somewhere. Um, and so we have the main camera, the filter wheel, the electronic focuser. The next step that I have is the guide camera. My guide camera is USB 3 as well and it's a very high resolution guide camera. So I want to be able to um, efficiently get the frames out of it. So I want to connect it to USB 3. I have this long ZW flat cable, which in my experience has worked fine. So I'll be using it on the guide camera. Just like before, I'm gonna connect it to the USB 3 port on the back of my little uh, computer at the top here. And we are going to do the same thing. We are going to spool. Why not? I mean, you know, it looks like it's working. So I'm going to spool around. And maybe that's the right distance. OK, I'm almost there. So I'll, uh, I'll do some, you know, it's not. <laughs> it's a bit like trial and error. Like I'm like, you know, rolling things around, rolling cables. That's, you know, um, the highly scientific method right there. Oh, I'm getting almost the, exactly the right length. So I am getting exactly the right length. Oh, this is beautiful. So I've uh, spooled all of that. And uh, you know what I'm going to do is I am going to secure that spooling there. That's a bit like, you know, not quite tight here. It's a bit difficult to to um, to tighten to make sure it's uh, it holds in place. So what I'm going to do is use another zip tie and I am going to uh, make sure that all of that spooling here stays together. Oops, zip tie is in the wrong direction. You can tell I'm not used to criminals entering my home. Okay, and this should be good enough to keep my little spool uh, going on here. And I'm gonna cut the end of uh, this zip tie. Cool, we're getting there. I have one last USB cable to plug in and this is my EQ Direct cable. So. I hope it's not going to rain. Let me put the cover of the telescope on just in case. Okay, so um, I have an EQ Direct cable, which is only for Skywatcher mounts. And depending on, the, on your mount, the cable will be different as well. So what this does is that it can, it can connect to the hand controller part port on your mount directly. And you can then control this via your computer, via a, a custom and open source, I believe, I think it is open source uh, driver, uh, ASCOM driver called EQ Mod. And I love EQ Mod, it works really well. It has its own little like weird things about it, but I really like it. And it basically lets you avoid having a hand controller that's dangling from your mount and then the cable, your USB cable, or maybe your RS-232 uh, cable going to that controller. So it makes everything uh, much easier, but then you need to either build your own EQ Direct cable or you need to buy one from multiple vendors that, uh, that provide such a cable. So um, what I have is this. Some of the newer EQ6R mounts here apparently have a USB port somewhere in there so that you can actually connect the computer directly to the mount via USB. And so you don't need to use EQ mod. You can use instead the standard Skywatcher ASCOM driver without having to use the hand controller. At least that's my understanding. I don't have such mounts, so I am not completely sure. Uh, but now the only thing we need to do is go ahead and connect this to uh, the USB 2 port on uh, the computer. And here we are, we're connected. We're, we're all good. I think I probably want to like, meh, I'm not gonna optimize that too much. I think this is good enough. Um, and maybe just Taito 3, meh, I'll see. I'll see, I think this is, this is really good in terms of wind resistance. This is much better than it used to be. And we now have all of the USB cables properly connected. So what is the next step? 
So the next step is basically making sure that all of your equipment is ready. Um, first thing first is just double check your balance. So if I um, eh, do something like this, is it in balance? And yes, more or less. So I can um, probably switch that weight a bit down. And basically I want to make sure that if I push here, oh, not too bad. If I push there, not too bad. And I'm intentionally putting a slightly more uh, moment arm on the uh, counterweight side of things. So yeah, I think that's fine. And what we're gonna do as well is I'm gonna open up the declination axis as well and see. So we're slightly front heavy with that telescope apparently. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to go back to horizontal or whatever that angle is. And we're just gonna unscrew a little bit and I'm gonna push, uh, sorry, backwards. There we are. Okay, so now we are probably, I'll, I'll double check the, uh, um, the balance later on. But you can see you can uh, balance on both the uh, RA axis and on the declination axis. And uh, what is my next step now? So now what I want to do is uh, I'll want to basically take my uh, dust covers off. I'll keep them on because if it starts raining, just in case. Uh, but I'll, I'll want to keep my um, dust covers off. I'm not going to do it on video because it's not that useful, I think. But I'll probably be, uh, I'd then be looking at a faraway object, whether it's a tree, a building, a person, something, as long as you're not like looking at weird stuff. Uh, uh, and then you'll want to make sure that you can bring that into focus. So that means that before you even do that, you want to make sure that can you connect to your camera? Can you turn on the cooler on your camera? Can you connect to your filter wheel? Can you change the filter on your filter wheel? Can you connect to your electronic focuser? Does the focuser turn properly? Do you have proper tension on the focusing mechanism here? So most focusers have a button uh, like, like a screw like that. I like to have mine like not even finger tight, just like so that it touches the fo focuser shaft, but doesn't do much more than that. Um, is my guide camera properly connected? Can I connect to it? Can I get an image? And so it's good to use uh, software like Nina or SharpCap to do that. By the way, something I did not men mention uh, with my voice in one of the previous videos, but I probably will have put subtitles to explain that as well. Your computer, if you don't know how to set up all of the software on your computer, I have a video about that. So you don't need to ask yourself too much about it. And I'm linking to it above how to set up your Windows computer for imaging with uh, Nina in particular and, uh, um, and PhD2 for guiding. Uh, one of the other things you'll want to do is um, come nightfall or when, it's, uh, when you can see the, uh, when you can see polar, Polaris or uh, whatever we use in the Southern hemisphere, you'll want to do polar alignment. So you can do polar alignment with a polar scope that is actually within um, that mount if your mount comes with a polar scope, some of the more recent mounts like the SEM70 comes with like an integrated eye polar polar scope. So it's like, you know, uh, there's tons of new stuff coming up, but this is an optical polar scope in my particular mount. Um, I've never used it. <laughs> I've never used it. The reason being that uh, I use SharpCap Pro instead to do polar alignment. It's extremely precise and extremely easy. And I have a video on that topic that I'm linking to above if you're interested. Um, also, one of the things though, if you want to use the polar scope, there's tons of tutorials about doing so. One of the things to remember is that if you open up the polar scope and you look through it and you only see darkness, it's because the declination shaft that we have in here has actually a hole in the middle. But depending on the rotation of the decl declination shaft, that hole may not be, not be lined up with your polar scope. So you'll want to actually use your hand controller or your um, uh, ASCOM driver to move the uh, declination axis, to turn the, to rotate the declination axis of the mount until you see the whole lineup with the poloscope. So that's something that tripped me up a long time ago. So uh, just to, uh, to mention it. And then after that, once you're ready uh, and uh, you know, evening starts to come, it's getting darker, you may want to take flat frames while you're at it. Because in my case, this is uh, equipment that will not move. Um, and so everything is static. And so I'll, I'll take flat frames, which I will reuse for months and months and months. And uh, once you've taken flat frames, 
you are ready. Everything is ready and you will be ready to image. Isn't that absolutely insane? So it's a lot of effort uh, to set up. You saw me. Even though I'm like used to all of that, I did struggle quite a bit. Uh, but you know, it's totally worth it. And now I have a setup that is fully automated. I'll be able to remote desktop to my little computer there and just control everything without you know having to leave my bedroom or my living room. Super convenient. And that is the whole point of being lazy. And now this is a lazy setup. Together we have built a lazy, lazy setup. Isn't that amazing? If you want to be even lazier, by the way, you can uh, set up your computer to automatically sync the images that it takes to a computer inside your house, for example. So you can do processing uh, from inside your house without having to transfer the data manually between your imaging computer and your processing computer. If you're interested in how to do that, I have a video about that as well linked above. Amazing how many videos I have by now. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Uh, for this series in terms of setting up the whole telescope. I need to clean up my balcony even though all of the mess you saw at the start of this series has been cleaned up. The, the, the balcony looks much better now. And actually just now my camera battery just died and I had to recharge it and I'm back like 30 minutes later. Uh, it's barely charged so I have to end up quickly. Uh, so the last step that I will do with that setup is just cover it with my Telegizmos 365 uh, telescope cover and just like the rest of my equipment I'll put the link down below if you want to purchase it uh, from OPT and if you use my link you'll uh, be helping me. It's an affiliate link so um, if the stars align and you want to do so and it's cheaper or it's easier for you please feel free to do so if not do not i love the 365 cover although it has drawbacks and i actually have a review about it with the drawbacks uh, pointed out here uh, so feel free to watch that as well so let me take my desiccant oh well actually i'll need to replace this one I still need to get uh, electronized. This one is... Uh, wow. Okay, this one still has some. So I'll put my desiccant on here and then I'll just put my uh, cover. So this cover is actually for 8-inch uh, SCTs on an Altaz mount, but it's working fine. And just like that, my equipment is covered and I am permanently ready. So I'll still need to do like the uh, polar alignment. Why do I have clear skies right now? Huh, maybe I'll come back later in the evening to do my polar alignment. Um, but yeah, we're done rebuilding this equipment. And that was it. That's it for the series of actually building up the equipment. So. Uh, it's been a lot of work and hopefully it's been very useful for all of you guys. If you feel like there's something that I haven't covered or you want me to cover, please feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, please be aware that this is part of a whole series of videos on starting astrophotography for lazy people. I'll be linking to the playlist up uh, here. And there's a lot of information on this channel, both like reviews, technical nature, uh, gain offset, exposure time, um, tips and tricks, all that kind of stuff related to astronomy and astrophotography. So if that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to go down, subscribe, click on the little, little notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. And with that, uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.